Hey guys, Colbert here. Welcome back to another Watcher of Realms video. We have some big, big news announcements coming in for the Black Friday month. Okay, it's going to be November. Uh, for November, they are going to be celebrating with some huge events. Two new heroes coming in this weekend. But not, that's not the big thing. Constance and Alaura are coming in. I'll do videos for them separately. We can go over them very quickly in this video in just a second. But Thanksgiving preview plus the Black Friday thing. So summoning Bonanza. We're going to have random legendary northerner or piercer hero and exclusive Black Friday deals with different percentages off Thanksgiving events. Okay. Um, participate in the Thanksgiving scroll exploration, Thanksgiving market and other events to earn free rewards. That's pretty cool, especially the legendary crystal uh, right there. So happy about that. I need lots of those and then multiple events to choose from between the uh, 24th and the 27th, the featured summon, surprise summoning and ancient summoning events will be held concurrently. This is the perfect time to obtain a legendary hero. So Constance and Alora will have the 10X. That's fine. We are getting used to the 10Xs every other week. So I'm totally okay with, I went through the heroes. I will be adding them to the website very, very soon. The website is up and running by the way, guys, if you haven't checked it out, go now. We have almost all the heroes up to date. In terms of all their skills, you can go through and have a look at it. It looks very, very nice. We also have rankings there, our own tier list. We have all the artifacts in the game right now. And we have a special section with tools where you can track your pity in terms of summonings and how many summons you have made so far, which um, legendaries you've summoned and recorded in there. And also the value calculator where you can see the value of a pack that you might be interested in buying and whether it's good or bad. Um, and we have our own value calculator in there. And of course, our own Discord server, we you can just click right here and you'll join uh, and you can discuss with other like minded people <laughs> about the game. So let's go back into the game and. Uh, boom, surprise summoning what that's going to be. It's the one plus one, guys, if you don't know what that is, it's you summon until you get a legendary and when that happens, you get another one uh, for free. That's pretty good, especially when you're close to pity. If you're not close to pity, you weren't tracking it on our pity tracker, then uh, you will have, uh, you know, just a surprise. You're going to be waiting when the summon is going to come. And then the ancient summon is the one we just had right now. So nothing too special about that. It's going to be separate. The surprise summoning will be separate. The 10x will be separate. Everything will be separate. It will be three different portals for summons and then legendary hero bundle what this means is this will be a pack to purchase this is not going to be something given out for free it says don't wait to get your random legendary hero along with items needed to promote them to six star and max level so what they will have in this pack is they will have any of the northern throne or star pierces within the packs as a legendary that you can pick up the chance i'm not sure what the chance is for the lords but especially the piercer one this is a very good candidate uh, for purchase if, if you are a spender. Uh, the Northern Throw one, I'm, I'm not so much excited about that. What that pack is probably going to be, it's not going to be the $30 we had um, when they were doing their 5 million download ce celebration. So 5 million download celebration that had a value of about $30. This one, I expect it to be at least double that because it will include um, items for you to level up the heroes as well. So gems and then awakening materials and six star materials in there, which for me, I don't value them because I, I slowly grind for those. So it depends how much more the price is. Um, they are advertising the Lords by the way here, but obviously the chance to get the Lords, I'm expecting it to be lower the same way that summons are. So exclusive Black Friday discounts. This, is, this sounds cool. But again, this is for spenders only guys, um, this specific section. Okay. So unfortunately, if you're not a spender, you'll have to just sit by and, and watch it. You can be tempted to buy always with these games, but remember you're not racing anybody to complete anything. You'll, if you're going to purchase something, you're going to do it for your own self and be mindful of maybe let's say you have a budget do not exceed your budget. Let's say you want to be saving for something else. Maybe they do some Christmas events, which I'm pretty, pretty hundred percent sure they will do. They have been, um, you know, doing events every single time there's an event, you know, uh, season coming through. So Halloween, they did something. Now they're doing something for Thanksgiving. They'll do something for Christmas for sure. I don't doubt it. So 
no no reason to rush of course they're advertising some some cool heroes right here but um who knows 400 percent off 550 percent off take advantage of annual peak discounts they used to do these in raid where the discounts were very very nice in terms of what they usually charge but again you're buying digital goods so have that in mind by the way if you are not a spender or if you are a spender and you stop spending after a while you'll start seeing um some packs they're called because i haven't spent in the game in about 40 days and uh, where's that pack there was a pack that was advertised like 400 percent off i wanted to show it for now but i'm not seeing it like this one it's showing us 500 percent off a rare bargain i'm not sure if it's this one but for me this is not worth it at all even though it's some good things in there it says 500 percent discount at about ten dollars that's the w gold value um it, it, there's no value for me to buy this uh, at the moment so it, this is still 500 percent off and uh, they're advertising that they will have similar bargains for their black friday celebration so have that in mind it might not be so much worth it just don't see the 500 percent and I say oh i have to buy it you don't have to um the game's not gonna go anywhere <laughs> uh and uh it's not gonna completely change your account experience Summoning Bonanza, earn three times of summoning crystals all at once. Don't miss out. So what that's going to be is probably going to be an event where as you're summoning like Oracle's Trial or just a normal event, you're going to get some maybe crystal fragments, again, which you can use to eventually get a proper proper summon. So that's it. And then we have, uh, oh, I, I cannot see the heroes here. I think I just have to go, uh, have to go here, click on events. Thanksgiving events, you can see them on your own. I think the most important thing to consider here is not the two legendaries that is up for grabs through this 10x, which is making me want to summon, but for the epics. I do not have hollow, guys. I do not have hollow, and I really want to summon, but I will be summoning first on the one plus one. Once I get my extra legendary there, which I think is worth it, I will go for hollow, okay? Um, and uh, I do have, I did manage to get Leia, by the way. I was opening shards yesterday on my phone. I was away. I was helping my parents. I live in Cyprus, so we have olive trees and we collect the olives. We make olive oil, right? The one we use in our food. Uh, Greeks use lots of olive oil in their food, so we got to make our own. It's expensive. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's why I wasn't posting for two days. That's not the point. That, what, what I'm saying, I was summoning on my phone just randomly because uh, my friend sent me and like an image. He he got Leia and I was like, oh, come on, I'll do a, te a ten pull. I did a ten pull. I got nothing. I said, oh, another one. There she is. And then I got greedy. I pulled everything I had and uh, it was only Leia and Raiden. I managed to also pick up Raiden. I forgot to mention. forgot to mention that I also picked up Raiden. Uh, happy with that. He helps my Kamet basically do his skills quicker. So um, <laughs> that's it in terms of all the news we have currently. But let's go over the two heroes that are coming into the game. The two new legendaries, Constance. Um, I went through all of her skills already for the website uh, in the back end of the website, just updating it through. So what she is, she is a legendary version of a Dolores, but with a twist. She's not attack based, she's a defender. So you'll still need to build her tanky for her to survive. So the way that she provides inspiration to your allies is through her ultimate inspiration is an effect that gives her attack to your allies so the more attack you have the more they receive this can go all the way to 45 percent which is very very nice but you'll have to also consider that uh, she'll be providing it in an area very similar to how dolores is so i i highly doubt that she'll be used instead of dolores you can use both of them but I wouldn't, I wouldn't see her being used in the guild. Well, for the reason being, she's a defender. She does not do anything other than heals. But with that in mind, instead of maybe using a healer plus Dolores, you can use her plus Dolores. But you should be timing their ultimates so that the inspirations are happening at a separate time. So that's what her ultimate is. Other than that, she's got an attack-based healing for allies in range, restoring health. When a hero blocks enemy, she stops healing and strikes one blocked enemy, dealing 100% um, damage. So it depends where you place her on the guild boss for her to, to start actually um, attacking. The attack based healing is nice, but again, I'm not sure how you're going to build a defender with both attack, 
also be defending and also be uh, a healer. It's a mixture of stats. When you're trying to do that, you're, you're failing. You're not specializing in a specific area. You're not being a tank. You're not being a healer. You're not being an inspiration buff provider. You're not being um, what a, a damage healer, okay? Because she can also do some damage. So she's a mixture of all. So I'm, unfortunately, without going into playtesting her just yet, I don't see her being that great. Here's healing on other ground units by 20%. Uh, Additionally, her basic attack heals and just boosts the multiplayer up with legendary crystals. I, I don't see the value in these, especially boosting inspiration would be nice, but it can be very expensive to get this going and it's worth on using it on other units. Um, and then the other passive, again, when receiving damage restores health equal to 100% of healing multiplier. When receiving AoE damage, additionally heals all allies. So when she's being healed, the hero restores 3% rage. That is very cool. So she can basically get 3% rage every two seconds when she's when she is being healed. Um, the talent, from what it says, it's she restores the rage to herself. It doesn't say restores to the allies. Overall, the stats um, that I'm seeing on her, she's got a very high uh, base health. This could be higher, but quite high uh, for what she's supposed to be. Attack is very low. Uh, it's uh, not as low as Dolores. Dolores has 2.4, I believe. She's got 3.2. Close, but not that amazing. Like um, when you want inspiration and the maximum benefit on it, you want to get as much attack as possible. And attack-based healers go for attack. But if you're also a defender, you're gonna go with health as well. If you're gonna use her for guild boss, you can not have her with so much help as you still need to be able to take a few hits from the big aoe especially if she's gonna be the only healer and i'm not sure on how you'll place her on the ground so that she benefits everyone and uh, and does not interrupt everyone and also manages to heal everyone if you're not going to use a healer so very interesting champion if we go back uh, to the site by the way you can you can just go here to the heroes you can filter if you're looking for like inspiration, all right? I believe uh, you can find it through buffs for sure. So these are all the champions that provide buffs, the, the heroes that provide buffs. We have Dolores for sure. Nisande provides an attack speed buff. Autumn provides her own buffs. I believe she provides crit rate increase to the allies uh, within, within her range. So that's pretty cool. And her ultimate provides a crit damage increase as well. Very, very strong uh, in terms of a buffer. And then uh, we also have some other units which provide buffs, such as Cyrene, which also provides cost reduction, uh, cost regen. Same thing with Narvi. Uh, Nunia as well, I think, provides defense increase and 10% in inspiration, which is okay, but it's a very low inspiration. She boosts up to 15%. And if we compare it to Dolores, her own inspiration is 30%, which goes all the way to 40%, which is way, way strong way, way stronger on what you would expect from an epic comparing this to now what we have um, constant, okay? Let's go on to the other hero. Let's have a look at the other hero offers right here, guys. Um, where do I click? Here, All right? Uh, Alora, Alora, I went through again her skills. She's gonna have invisibility. So what invisibility does is she cannot be targeted. Very, very good for gear A3 as a skill. You put her in a towel on her own. And, <clears throat> and guess what? She's going to be great because she's got she, she's the one I would love to get, although she doesn't change anything to my teams. My gear A3 is at 21 already, so it doesn't change anything for me. But invisibility, this stops when you pop your ultimate, which is a burst attack. Uh, when triggered, loses invisibility. Each attack cha changes to two strikes in a row. And damage to airborne units increased by 45%. So if she's got a strong hit, if you build her right, she will be taking down uh, those enemies in gear A3 and helping you out. She does not do AoE damage. She can do split attack, which is a little bit different. But she's still very strong for single target, especially airborne units since she prioritizes there. So if something is flying, she's going to hit that instead of a ground unit. Remember that. Also, look at this passive. Just an extra crit rate at 10%. And also, if there are no allies in the adjacent tile, so one tile exactly next to her in all in all areas, just, just remember like a square around her. 
um, she'll be getting 20% crit damage. And if you boost it up, it's going to be 40% more crit damage. But here's the kicker, right? If you look at her awakening at awakening one, excess crit rate is converted into an equal percentage of crit damage. That is very, very nice in terms of you're going to go for a 60% crit rate ring, guys, on her. And you're going to say, Cold Brew, are you nuts? Why would you take that? Why wouldn't you focus on something else? Because 60% crit rate is going to get you closer to the 90% that you need. Okay, at least 90%. And then any extra that you might have on your gear already is going to be over the limit. Over the limit of, uh, well, 90% that you need on your gear. And then once you pass 100%, anything else will be crit damage, which will benefit her. So on, I believe, um, a fully leveled up legendary piece of mythic well uh, it's not legendary but the set piece this any fully leveled up set piece on mythic quality i, I believe gives uh 60 or 66 percent crit rate which is very very nice it's not the high highest amount of crit damage which you which, which you can get which is i believe 72 percent but again i think that's the way to go with her i think the way to go with her would be the crit rate ring am i correct with this it's still 60%. Why did I think it was? I thought it was. Um, ah, that is disappointing. I, th I thought it was going to be 66%. So now, now I'm thinking about it. So it's 60% here on these sets. Oh, okay. You know why I thought about that? Because these sets, the ones that are not, these items, the, the ones that are, do not belong to a proper set, like the lower these are the lower sets and the other ones are the good sets uh these have lower stats and when you get them to like this one the ancient uh um not the ancient mythic but this version it's 66 percent crit rate yeah look at this yeah when these sets uh, are available you get 66 percent when you have these it's 60 and when you ascend it it becomes um 66 percent when it belongs to that better part the top quality set wow i confused myself too much there so um that's how i think you're gonna build her with a crit rate ring because you can focus on so much other things plus any crit rate that you have is going to be being uh, transformed into um just crit damage which is very nice on her you're going to focus on attack percent also on the other two pieces instead of um instead of crit damage and you're going to be dealing lots of damage, I think. I think she does good damage. When Trigger loses invisibility, each attack changes to two strikes in a row and damage to urban units increases by 45%. Is this worth it, though, for an ultimate? Because this is, this is different than usual. This is not damage plus 5%. This is damage multiplier to urban units plus 5%. So this is another 15% more damage to this. So 60% more damage to urban units. I'll have to test it out. That will be a separate video for sure. This was just a warm up, guys, on everything that is coming. Thank you for watching. Check on over our site, warcodex.com, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.